This is probably one of the grimiest videos I've ever made. Words cannot describe that depravity of some individuals on the internet, as you'll soon see. Some might assume my mind is fractured beyond repair, my skin raw from a thousand hot showers, and my innocence brutally molested. But you could not be more wrong. Much like a marine on his third tour in the Middle East, I am desensitized, as you'll soon be by the end of this video. Anyways, I organized, and yes, I didn't make this iceberg, whatever. I organized this iceberg not by how well known the cum artifacts are, but by how mentally ill I think the person behind them is. I'm also only including internet cum stories where a picture exists, otherwise I'm just gonna assume it's fake. Our young generation is clearly lost, man. Clearly lost, man. Like, like, I don't even know what to say no more, man. Like June 2023. A man posted a story to the subreddit Today I Fucked Up. Basically a place where redditors post stories about the ways they fucked up. About how much he loves plants. Today I fucked up by telling my gym bro about my cum plant. As always, this was not today, but a few weeks ago. So a while ago, me and my gym bro were in the middle of a workout. And as always, we're talking about girls and stuff in between the sets. We somehow got to discussing ways to make Jack and Off feel more like the real thing. To which I mentioned having used one of my plants to come into for the best experience since the pot is quite large so I can kneel next to it and not worry about any, quote, splash damage, which normally occurs when trying to shoot into a small tissue. Now for some backstory, I'm no weirdo with a plant fetish, oh, this will come into question later. It all started when I was 13, and on a family vacation where I found what looked to me like a big magic acorn avocado seed. I took it home and planted it. I hit my puberty with which came the discovery of self-pleasuring, and as the pot was right next to my bed, I chose to finish into it for the afro-mentioned reasons. I did it only for about a year because even though the avocado grew a big healthy canopy like never before, some mushrooms started to grow in the pot which I found undesirable and didn't want my family to get suspicious. Well, when I told this to my gym bro, he didn't really understand what a reasonable procedure that was and labeled me as depraved. I guess I ended up being the weirdo after all. I still have the plant, and it's about 9 years old. Still use it from time to time. <laughs> TLDR, told my gym bro I used to have a dedicated plant to come into and now thinks I'm a weirdo. That's... That's not all though, going into his post history, we can see his bio and for some reason I doubt his claim that he's not a plant fetishist. I'm into growing plants, seeing them emerge from a seed, creating such a majestic structure full of life and elegance out of such a small little grain of nothing that is a seed. If you're wondering what this man's girlfriend looks like, here you go. Fortunately, she's not doing too well these days. How to make my avocado sprout again? Should it be should it be inside or outside, light or dark? Any tips welcomed. I topped it a few I topped it a few weeks ago. Maybe stop fucking coming on it, dude! I don't know. I'm not a plantologist by any means, but even I know that thing is not coming back, bro. <laughs> but maybe I spoke too soon, because a couple weeks later he posted this. Maybe the trick is coming on your trees, who knew? Our young generation is clearly lost, man. Clearly lost, man. Like, like, I don't even know what to say no. On January 28th, 2023, this was posted to the aptly titled subreddit Neckbeard Nests. Apparently this is not OP's jizz wall, but her boyfriend's. He had a difficult childhood, but he's healing slowly. Now he's the sweetest guy ever, he just graduated from welding school, buys me flowers every week, he's so patient and would never even think about raising his voice at me. I'm so proud of him. Still astonishingly horny though. Just awesome. Actually kind of a wholesome comment section, um... Users are even recommending shit to remove the stains out of the wall. This just goes to show you that, uh, incels, man, you really have no excuse. This guy spent his days punching and busting on his wall, and he still found someone who would repair it with him. There is someone out there for everyone. He just gotta, I guess he just gotta graduate welding school. Our young generation is clearly lost, man. Clearly lost, man. Like, like, I don't even know what to say no. July 10th, 2014. Found this on the underside of the desk of one of my coworkers who got fired. If you're wondering why his coworker would do this, you're gonna be disappointed because it's a mystery. Why was he fired? Sexual harassment? He was an oil and gas engineer that wasn't worth what they were paying him. His wife used to spend an odd amount of time up at that office. Maybe we now know why. His office was a ways off from everyone else's. Plus he typically ate Indian food at his desk for lunch. 
so the smell of the office by him was never quite right. One possible explanation OP gave was that maybe he was banging his wife on it, and who knows. Sometimes it's hard to find the silver lining in these stories, but on this one, it's easy. Boss makes a dollar, I make a dime, that's why I bust all over my desk on company time. Fuck it! Our young generation is clearly lost, man. Clearly lost, man. Like, like, I don't even know what to say no more. Nine years ago, a Redditor and rap artist named White Licorice made the mistake of rooming with another local rapper during college. But his roommate didn't start by jizzing on his mirror. I'm thinking he got off looking at himself in the mirror, otherwise he could have just come in a paper towel or a sock. He came in a box and I got mad at him when I found it and told him not to do it anymore. Then I believed he started doing this. Edit, I'm shamelessly using this exposure to promote my new rap music. Alright, let's check it out. Yo, I fucking hate cops. But I understand their place in our society. I hate some cops, but other cops are pretty cool. I hate some cops. But coming in a box wasn't enough for his roommate. How did you find it in the end? He eventually just told us one night, like, yo, I have this mirror in my room that I've been coming on all year. I think it was all a, a big joke to him. And then White Licorice walked in and saw this. Lol, who the fuck admits to doing that anyway? How did he expect you guys to react to that? You may be wondering how in the hell did his roommate get away with coming on his mirror for an entire year without anyone finding out? Well, White Licorice has had an explanation. We didn't go in his room much, it was also behind the door, so when we would open the door, it wouldn't be covered up. Err, uh, what an odd thing to come against. Does he have a self-fetish? I also rap, which is how I met him, so I can vouch that most rappers have a self-fetish. Hate to see your mirror. Also, is he white? His rap is pretty nevy. He's white, his dad is from Haiti though. Maybe he's like an eighth black or something? Not sure, we tried to get him to stop saying the n-word, but he refuses. Here's OP and the weird cum mirror roommate. They're both pretty weird and cringeworthy. The time is right now, I ain't waiting for shit. I'm a bag full of crazy, think I have rabies. Two times more, do it again. And I'll never buy a Bentley with a stroke of my pen. One time more, do it for them. I love you. We used to have the whole family over for my birthday. The picture or the rap music? <laughs> yes. Basically the comment section devolved into shitting on OP and his roommate's rap music. What do you think? I think it goes monkey raw. Our young generation is clearly lost, man. Clearly lost, man. Like, like, I don't even know what to say no more, man. Like You've all seen the Justin Wang video, so I'll keep this short. Monday, April 30th, 2012, at 8.16pm Pacific Standard Time. This post on r slash askreddit graced the internet. Throwaway time, what's your secret that could literally ruin your life if it came out? I decided to post this partially because I'm interested in reaction to this, as I've never told anyone before, and also to see what out there fucked up things you've done. Of the over 40,000 comments, one stood out the most. A comment by the now-deleted redditor Linfect was posted exactly 5 minutes and 29 seconds after the original post at 8.21pm. Cousin died when we were both 17. There was a reception at his house just after the funeral. I went into his room and stole all the money that was there. Took some other valuables that his parents wouldn't realize were gone. No one knows that I did it, they just assumed he didn't have any money in his room, only loose change. I don't regret it, but I will never admit I did it. Also my cum box. Elaborate on this cum box, please. Well, it's, it is exactly what it sounds like. It's a shoe box, or at least once was, and whenever I masturbate, I come into it. I've had it for two or three years now, I think, so it, <laughs> so it has a fair amount of cum. It smells like, it smells atrocious, and I tried to burn it once. When I lit it on fire, it was too damp due to, to, to the cum that it simply sizzled and didn't manage to actually light up. Turns out burning cum smells awful, so I had to spray it with a deodorant body spray just to get the old smell of burnt cum away. It also has some drenched paper stuck to it. That's pretty much it. 
I'm gonna say what we've all been thinking. Where's the picture of it? Well... A lot of people are asking me, why? Well, I'm apparently a rather disturbed individual, but it just kind of happened. Bought new shoes and needed some place to come use the box. It just escalated from there, kept using it each time, telling myself I would throw it out soon. Never did. Two or three years later, I still have it. It was planned or anything. I'm just gonna assume he went. It wasn't planned. It just happened. Fuck, this really exploded. 20k views of my cum box. Did not expect this. To give a fuller understanding of the kind of person it takes to come in a shoebox for that long, I'll show some screenshots of Linfect's little-known second AMA. Where do you store your ejaculations now? Is there a cum box 2.0? The box is <clears throat> the box is damaged beyond repair now, so I can't really use it anymore. Now I just come on the floor and clean it up later. Did use Ziploc bags for a short period, but stop that. After digging through his post history, some redditors noted a very interesting subreddit Linfec likes to post to. What's up with pics of dead kids? Just a subreddit that interests me. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why we should not be giving this person attention. Maybe social services should, though. Why do you like seeing dead kids? It feels real. It's a whole new world. Pictures that you won't see elsewhere. It is interesting. Can't really explain why, but I like it. Almost as if you are seeing something that you aren't meant to. I mean, well, someone had to ask the obvious, and no, he doesn't jerk off to dead bodies, apparently. Why do you enjoy seeing beaten animals? I wouldn't say I enjoy it, sometimes I do, but not always. If you don't enjoy it, then why do you look? Sometimes I do, for example, Shovel Dog is now a classic. Something about watching an animal or a person die is fascinating. It's watching a life end, sometimes in the most brutal of ways. Do you show any psychopathic slash sociopathic tendencies in real life? Yes, I lie near constantly. I'm not empathetic. I don't feel guilt over what I do. What other strange secrets do you have? Um, what secrets are you looking for? Stuff like the cum box or something else? What you got? I'll give you another sexual deviancy story. My grandmother, who had dementia, would frequently call me. Never made much sense, but she did. I was going through this phase where I fantasized about getting caught masturbating, really turned me on, and was close to doing it in public, but never got that far. So whenever she called I would start masturbating and playing porn in the background, quite loudly. She would inevitably notice and hang up, 
kept going and it didn't matter because she has dementia so she would either forget about the incident or I could just say she was hearing things. Worked out quite well for a bit, was fun. What do you normally masturbate to? The usual, but mostly it is incest or incest roleplay. Also traps. Of course. You are one odd dude. I'm obviously not going to show the image on the blue link but it's two naked uh, Eug Eugenia Cooney looking girls laying down next to each other with their eyes closed. Obviously, people wondered if they were dead, because gooning to corpses would be very on brand for this guy, but apparently they're not. Okay, moving away from the sexual degenerate stuff, let's see what he's like out in the real world. What do you do for a living? Currently, I'm a student with a part-time job. What are you going to school for? Literature. Here's a couple of books I'd recommend for him. I'm quite introverted. I do not act this way in real life, though. Real life is something else entirely. I cannot be myself. I'm not antisocial. I will engage in conversation willingly, but I will not go out of my way to talk to people. I have never been in a serious relationship, but I am not forever alone. Forever alones crave attention. They want to be with someone. I don't want that. And of course, the most important question, length of your penis? 14 centimeters, don't have a ruler, but that is my skilled guess. I often get PM'd about updates or current status of the box, generally a few a week, so I might as well update this post, if anyone even gets linked here anymore. Current status, I have created life. Mold has begun to grow in the box and has taken over a fair amount. Smells a bit worse, mainly due to damper apartment, so it does not dry as fast, hence the reason why the mold has begun. I'll not, I will never be rid of my need for it. I hate and love the box, just as I hate and love myself. Our young generation is clearly lost, man. Clearly lost, man. Like, like, I don't even know what to say no more, man. Like... The cum figurine. There's not much more to this, but I do want to point out that there is an entire subreddit aptly titled r slash coming on figurines dedicated to this stuff. And it has over 50,000 members. Jesus Christ. Our young generation is clearly lost, man. Clearly lost, man. Like, like, I don't even know what to say no more, man. Like... And now for the artifact you've all been waiting for. The artifact that started it all. The big bang of cum artifacts. The infamous one and only My Little Pony Cum Jar. On April 1st, 2014, a hacker on the dark website known as 4chan posted a picture of a glass jar containing a plastic toy figure of the My Little Pony character Rainbow Dash. And of course, <laughs> sperm. He called the jar the PCJP or the Pony Cum Jar Project. We wouldn't get an update for many months until November 11th, 2014 when he once again gave an update to the PCJP. Hello my dearest MLP. I come across you today to reveal a horrible accident to the Pony Cum Jar project. The place where I was hiding my cum jar were actually on top of a kind of radiator that was connected to our furnace, and of course since it's getting colder we light it up. <laughs> so basically, the Rainbow Dash figure has been boiled in cum. It's brown now, and for comparison I also got another glass of cum that's about a week old. I will probably still bury it someday. People's reactions to the post were very mixed. Some reacted in disgust, some in intrigue, some in laughter, and some were encouraging him to continue. Uh, this guy said the heat caramelized the glucose in the semen, which gives it that brown color. I don't know if the brown is from the heat or, or the age, maybe both. Unboiled cum sitting in a jar for months will turn brown eventually, right? Wait, so does that mean the project is over? I will probably not be able to add cum to it anymore, so I'll probably just bury it when I get the chance. Well, shit, we had a good run. Fear not, dear Anon. The time will come where I will buy a new jar. My plans are at summer. And start again. This little fault shall not stop me from drowning Rainbow Dash in my semen. I shall proceed with the project when the time is right. Maybe boiling it should become part of the project. This, why don't you continue, OP? Because this is a bit too disgusting, even for me. Very well. We, or at least I, support you in whatever decision you make. As long as that decision is, you will drown RD in cum. However, the project wasn't over. No, it had only begun. February 2016, he revealed a new method of depositing his load. Before, I assume, he just opened the lid and came in the jar. But now, he comes in a separate jar and then pours it into the main one to avoid contact with a decomposing congealed mess. And finally, on January 9th, 2017, the project was completed.
Watch Justin Wang's interview with the Kumjar guy to get a further insight into what's going on in his head. Our young generation is clearly lost, man. Clearly lost, man. Like, like, I don't even know what to say no more, man. Like... On September 21st, 2012, this was posted to r slash WTF. You thought the shoe box was bad? My cousin's neighbor has been shooting into these boxers for seven years. The smell was horrendous. Why are you- why are you touching it? If I was touching it, how would I have taken the picture? He is holding it, smarts. People on Reddit need to stop assuming the person in the pictures is the OP. Clarification for everyone on a couple things. 1. I have known him for about 2 weeks. I was over at my cousin's neighbor's house with my cousin. We'll call him the boxer cum kid Rob. We are in Rob's room and I made the comment that it kind of smelled like shit in his room and he directed me to a drawer that was sitting half open. My cousin and I almost fucking gagged and my cousin walked out of the room. Then I saw the karma opportunities were quite large. I snapped a picture of it with my phone and uploaded it to Imger, to Imger, Imger, Imger this morning. 3. I asked him why the hell he didn't come into a rag or paper towel and then dispose of it like a normal person and his only rationale was that it required too much effort. Okay, yeah, sure. My cousin and I think it's extremely fucked up and he says that we're overreacting. I linked him this thread on Reddit and he thinks it's quite the achievement and also finds it fucking hilarious. So I guess his cousin's friend just showed it off like he was proud of it or something. What happened to Shay, man? I think this is an, I mean, this is an absolute biohazard. Look at how congealed it is. Some psychiatrist needs to dig into why these people do this. I mean, at least from what I can tell, to the guy's credit, uh, he never wore the cum boxers. Our young generation is clearly lost, man. Clearly lost, man. Like, like, I don't even know what to say no more, man. Like... And now we're on the last artifact of layer two. <laughs> Wasp Nutjar project update. Most, most wasps have completely rotten and turned into mold. Mold ridden smudge. Added one yesterday while the one from five days ago begins to decompose. The semen seems to be speeding up the process, as without outside access it takes a while for wasps to decompose. <laughs> Post side view pics. I agree, I actually couldn't find any uh, other angles of the jar besides this one. You could say you could say this for pretty much everything in this video, but imagine how hard the post-nut clarity hit for this dude after the first come. The intense shame of jizzing on a bunch of dead wasps. How many times did the question, what have I done, drone on and on in his mind over and over. I guess it wasn't enough to not continue. You think this is bad? You think this is bad? This is only level 2. How can it get worse? Trust me, it can. Our young generation is clearly lost, man. Clearly lost, man. Like, like, I don't even know what to say no more, man. Like... On February 11th, 2015, this was posted to the Finnish image board. Uh, fuck. Yelalta. Sorry, Finns, for molesting your beautiful language. My oriental vocal cords were simply not designed for the articulation of such words. So I, uh, Google translated everything, so it's a bit, um, it's a bit scuffed. Ask anyone who has wiped his sperm on the same t-shirt for 8 to 9 years. There must be about 4,500 cases accumulated. So, ask anything from the tank top nymphs. Can I ask anything? Have you wiped your sperm on the same t-shirt for 8 to 9 years? Are you a tank top type? It doesn't fit anymore these days. I tried recently. It doesn't stretch at all when it's hard. In addition, the dried sperm comes off so fucking bad that I would be covered in dried sperm dust afterwards. Can I ask you anything? Butter. Have you wiped your sperm on the same t-shirt for 8 to 9 years? Yes. Are you a tank top type? Oh yes. See, I don't know what tank top type comes up a lot in the translations. Um, if, if there are for some reason any fin Finnish people in the audience, uh, comment what tank top type means, because I, no, I have no idea. I can't think of anything reasonable to ask, but I've been a fan of yours for a long time. Keep up your valuable work, tasty prince. Is the condition of the item of clothing as crisp as you might expect from the picture? It is. 
if not more crispy. You have to search and find the sets where you dare to wipe your dick so the scratcher doesn't scratch it in a bad way. Actually, the sleeves don't seem to bend properly. It's a bit like a freshly baked oat cookie. Soft but firm. If the AP made tea out of that shirt and drank it and everything was caught on video, would beat AP internet. Otherwise, I could do it, but the video recording would be kind of annoying because it's hard to do the action and plot anonymously. I could perhaps take the whole photo series from the artwork if it could somehow be done so that my identity remains a secret. Well, if you take a strainer, put a shirt in there, and pour boiling water through into a container, then just drink it in a mug and cheer up. If, when you get tired of the shirt, can you throw it in the washing machine and deliver the results? I can, or I'll burn it. In any case, there will be a video about that when the moment comes. The destruction of the shirt was dangerously close not long ago when a seductress threatened my studies at the wizarding school, but it was survived with a scare. What does it smell like? Quite frankly, pretty damn bad. For fluffy sperm. The smell used to be citrusy. Someone may remember, not anymore nowadays, to a dead cell that smells the most. But making tea out of a crusty shirt that's been cummed on for a decade wasn't vile enough for these fucking guys. So he ground the shirtjiz into powder and prepared to snort it like cocaine. Dating could have happened, but I managed to burger myself out of the situation. No one I know knows about the shirt, and ne neither would my dating partner if there was one. I guess someone offered to buy the shirt, because... Offers are accepted. I would assume the, that 9000 E is at the limit. I can't say anything. Still, many have offered to buy. And then... <laughs> <coughs> Well, it's over now. Sorry for the quality, I don't want to identify myself. Dried sperm, fucking nose burns, feels, tastes, like snot in the throat. You know, people reacted to this guy snorting cum cane in disgust. But what if, what if snorting jizz powder is the key to becoming superhuman? What if it's like a more potent version of Tren A? Think about it. You need a lot of testosterone to produce sperm. Not only that, but large concentrations of testosterone are present in male ejaculate. You are pretty much taking all natural tests from your own body, none of this synthetic lab shit you have to inject in yourself. No retarded numbers, no post-psychotherapy, this guy is probably getting yoked right now off his own supply, and you should too! I mean, if all Finnish people did this, imagine what they could be capable of. They already have the world domination genetics from their Mongol ancestry, combine that with a roided out population, and I predict they could be the world's number one superpower by 2026. Our young generation is clearly lost, man. Clearly lost, man. Like, like, I don't even know what to say no more, man. Like... Real quick feature, the masturbation sweatpants. Sadly, I think I'm retiring my black masturbation sweatpants. They're starting to fall apart. Close-up pics are of the inside crotch. I usually wear the red, red sweats over the black ones and either come inside or pull out and shoot down the leg of the red ones. There's something so extra vile about the fact that he wears it while coming in it. Look at how it's curling up at the end there, and, and the fucking fabric looks like elephant skin. And why the need to post it on Facebook, Jesus Christ. Our young generation is clearly lost, man. Clearly lost, man. Like, like, I don't even know what to say no more, man. Like... August 8th, 2018. This was posted on the B board. Hey B, it's been one year and six months of coming on my Mercy mouse pad, and I've decided to retire her. But there's where you come in, B. Should I start a new one? What the fuck, is this real or pasta? Can you post a timestamp, OP? And yes, it was real. Fuck, dude, I never thought I would actually get to witness this level of degeneracy. I mean, I knew it existed, but I never thought I would actually get to witness it. This is sick and on, and I want you to know that I am extremely weirded out and disgusted, but also proud to be witness to this level of retardation, autism, and degeneracy. You're welcome. Man, he caked that mouse pad, holy shit. I don't like how it has the texture of like, um, uh, like a dried riverbed, and that piece he took off to show the mouse pad just, just trapped under there is, is so, so, so disturbing. Imagine your only window to the outside world being a foul smelling, opaque, brown and yellow, hardened crust. Horrible, horrible fate. In case you're wondering how the mouse pad looked before. The three I own. This is so horrifying. Look at, 
look at the look on their faces, they know they're next. It's like, it's like being next in line for execution. So which one will be next, OP? That's up to you. So who won? Ari did, with uh, winning 51.93% of the vote. And if you're a normal functioning member of society like me and have no idea who these two characters are, don't worry, I looked it up and this character right here is Ari from, is the, uh, is, <clears throat> is Ari from the video game League of Legends. And this character is, uh, this character here is Kana from the Japanese anime Miss Kobay Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. <sighs> I plan to lock her away for some time. Damn, dude, have some mercy and put it out of its misery. Bury it or cremate it or something. And then people encouraging him to eat it. I doubt your parents love you anymore. For some reason, I doubt his parents ever loved him in the first place. And then, in the ultimate twist, Fag, you've got nothing on my cum shirt. How very fortunate that these two degens are beefing over who has the filthier cum artifact. What a time to be alive. You probably can already tell right now, but what makes these artifacts worse than the previous layer is just the the proximity of the uh, the nut to the nutter. The pony and the wasp jar were enclosed and stored away from the person's body, but it takes an extra level of depravity and filth to fucking wear clothes covered in your own decomposing semen. I don't have... Our young generation is clearly lost, man. Clearly lost, man. Like, like, I don't even know what to say no more. The carpet furry is such an intense topic that it honestly deserves its own video. I can't do it justice in such a short amount of time. But I think one of the best ways to introduce this this fucking guy is to compare bios from both Wikifur and Encyclopedia Dramatica. Wikifur. Bill J. Clark, also known as Shadow Wolf S, was born on March 3rd, 1956. He is a bisexual, enjoys fursuits, and is a plushophile. His RP character is a booksome female werewolf vixen. Shadow Wolf is. Her coloration is okay, no one cares. His artist signature is Moon Shadow Luna 49. He also uses other aliases online, including Nickelback Wolf, where he all he admits that Yiffy Cub art is his passion. He uh, he is always open for commissions and will offer free samples, con badges, and fursuit portraits. And now for Encyclopedia Dramatica. William Bill J. Clark, also known as Shadow Wolf S, is a disgusting display of humanity that was sadly not aborted and was thus born on March 3rd, 1956. His persona is a sickening anal beast that has dongs and tits, usually more tits than dongs. He draws horrible furry porn of characters with puckered assholes that are more often than not spewing shit. Shadow Wolf S is a wildly unpopular individual, even amongst furries. According to those who have met him, he has a habit of vividly describing how he fucks dogs, loving to do so in paragraphs that have spelling and capitalization that don't don't resemble any form of competent writing skills. Not surprisingly, he's also a pedophile and has even gone so far as to solicit a minor for sex in exchange for alcohol. He also enjoys having sex with stuffed animals. Although he openly gives out his phone number and his address, it is still uncertain how he gets electricity in a dumpster. <laughs> Multiple personality disorder. It is highly suspected that Bill has an extra chromosome as he goes by over 9,000 different names online. Known aliases are, and then it's just a whole bunch of usernames. Yeah, this guy is a, this guy is a character. So this, this man, Bill Clark, is a 67 year old furry. I'll read excerpts from his 15 year old's uh, So Furry account bio. I am a 52 year old furry bisexual, male bi, well, whatever, fursuits, and an active plushy file, which is a guy who uh, fucks stuffed animals. Yiffy art is my passion and I do commissions, cheap or free, for comments. I. Uh, as I'm pretty good yiffy artist. Yiff, yiff, yiff. What is this word yiff, you may be wondering? Well, basically, it's it's furry porn. Named after the sound foxes make when they, uh, when they mate. And cub yiff, which is what Bill is into, is... You can guess. Well, beyond being a pedo furry, Bill is an artist. He crafts gorgeous, breathtaking work. But I think this one is his Michelangelo, his magnum opus, a work that perfectly encapsulates his, uh, artistic prowess. But besides drawing, Bill also makes fursuits. As mentioned in his bio, Bill is a plushophile, which of course means a person who has sexual intercourse with uh, plushies. Here's Bill talking about how he has sex with stuffed animals. I have, I have my own version, which is a non-anthro female St. Bernard around three feet tall sitting. I went to a sex shop and bought a quality latex vagina for her. 
Total costs 18 bucks and lubed up with some KY. It felt it feels better than any woman I have ever yiffed. You can even adjust the tightness by adding more fiber fill to the dog. Be sure and get the one with the large nubs inside. It is heaven. Ooh, woof. So basically what Bill would do is uh, go to thrift stores, buy some child's beloved toy, soak it in cum, and then cut it up and stitch it into a foul-smelling, decomposing fursuit. Here's Bill describing the process. Well, for the head, all you really need is a large, high-heat hot glue gun. Just make a just make a skeleton head, or as I call it, a prototype M, um, out out of plastic mesh, really cheap at Walmart, around 35 cents a sheet. You can cut you can you just cut pieces of fur to the right shape and glue them on in layers, building up around the cheeks with couch foam, foam from old couch cushions or cardboard, etc. So yeah, basically constructed this spring trap, Frank from Donnie Darko looking ass fur suit that is literally decaying because it is soaked in his decomposing semen. He never cleaned it. He apparently cleared entire rooms and furry conventions because he quote, reeked like death. You know, <laughs> you know you smell fucking atrocious when even furries don't want to be around you. So yeah, this fursuit easily one of the worst cum artifacts. And the guy behind it is uh, mentally deranged. But as it turns out, our friend Bill has a dark side. You see, Bill is, uh, is a dog rapist and actually deserves to be in prison. Bill has several pet dogs, all of which he has raped on several occasions. Hey all you other zoos, I love to screw large willing dogs, ain't He likes to be knotted by medium sized dogs. He has taken Tane, Dane Tommy's 8 inch. <clears throat> I haven't yet screwed a male husky, but I will as soon as I get one for a pet. They are really into... <clears throat> um, my friends assured me. If not, well, he can always not me. Mmm, nice. It reminds me of my experience working as a dog walker for our local shelter, where I fucked a very receptive one-year-old male uh, golden in... Uh, I swear, someone with nothing to lose should fucking this guy. If that's not bad enough, these dogs are subjected to live in uh, absolute hoarder filth. Ah, uh, just look at the fucking uh, trash everywhere. Anyway, in order to lighten the mood, here's Bill passed out in a hotel lobby during a furry convention with a with a swastika drawn on his forehead. And now, for the greatest cum artifact of all time. An artifact so unbelievably phenomenal that an entire layer is dedicated to it. A cum artifact so onerous that it took almost a year to complete. An artifact so meticulous that it took two people to create. Ladies and gentlemen, this godlike artifact is... You. That's right. You. However many years ago, your father purposefully or accidentally laid his seed in your mother. But extraordinarily, instead of drying up into some brown crust on a plush doll like the other cum artifacts we discussed, this sperm lived. You, among millions of sperm, raced toward a single egg, each carrying the potential for life. The odds stacked against any one of them reaching their destination were astronomical, yet against all odds, one succeeded. That microscopic triumph, that convergence of life, is you. Whether you consider this event a curse or a blessing, one fact still stands. You lived. You grew. And all the life experiences you have accrued at this exact point in time watching this video are undeniably you. The fact that anything exists is a miracle. Everything that shapes our world is the result of an unfathomable amount of minuscule coincidences, an incomprehensible amount of cum artifacts. The fact that life exists at all comprehending the sheer magnitude of existence, from the particles at the quantum level to the grand cosmic forces that govern our universe, it really melts the mind. And that leaves you. Instead of watching six hour long breadtube video essays, you can watch a half hour long flobbles video about redditors jizzing on stuffed animals. Only you can decide where the road goes. And it's never too late to start taking the right path. Uh, please like, <clears throat> comment, and subscribe. Thank you to Cyber Anus Vlogs for the fan art, and make sure to follow my Instagram and Twitter. Thank also, guys, I made a Patreon last night if you would like to support.
YouTube isn't going to give me any doubloons for this one. Uh, five reasons to support. Becoming a member helps keep my channel woke. Uh, pronouns safe space free. Donating money keeps the last free-thinking, anti-censorship, anti-thought crime channel alive. <laughs> um, okay, but seriously, becoming a member will help me pay for stupid shit like rent and utilities so I can focus more time on making videos, which in turn will make them come out more often than uh, once every four months. And uh, becoming a member also unironically keeps the channel censorship free. I feel so retarded saying that, but it's true. Uh, so far, I only have one member tier. Uh, it's $2 a month. Um, your name will get featured at the end of every video, and I kind of, and for the, for the time being, it'll stay like that. Thank you for watching. Also, shout out to the band Panavision on Spotify. They have nothing to do with the video, but they're very good. If you're the kind of guy that wants to get dominated by a 10-foot tall goth mommy GF, or if you like the band Radiohead, go listen to uh, Panavision, not the smile song, the band, Pana-Vision. Also, uh, shout out to the channel Stamina again, and shout out to the up and coming West Coast rappers Lil Blop and Big Sneeze. Uh, their collab EP on SoundCloud is low key fire. <coughs> Thank you. Yo, I fucking hate cops. <laughs>